Hello and welcome to London on this rather crisp and lovely November's morning. About 10 minutes walk away is Octopus Investments and I've been chatting to Oliver Welling about the big issues shaping investor sentiment. I'm struggling to see many positive themes for the rest of the year. Chinese GDP growth has shrunk to its lowest level in a long time. We have potential fiscal problems in the US after the election. And obviously the Eurozone rumbles on, so do you see much reason for positive sentiment for the rest of the year? Um, well, you have uh, basically nailed the three core macro themes that have been um, a concern for investors most of the year. Global growth, or lack of it, um, the Eurozone and the impending fiscal cliff. And uh, none of those problems have gone away. Um, Europe has gone a little bit quiet, fair enough. Um, the election is a distraction for the fiscal cliff, but um, the outcome of that is very important. And um, yet yeah, both of those things feed into global growth, they're big regions. Um, on um, a kind of on a more sort of day-to-day -day level, the news that we're seeing through coming from the grassroots, particularly in the US, um, there are encouraging signs. So if you're if you're looking for good news, um, you can see some there. So we're seeing uh, improvements in uh, consumer confidence and business confidence in the US. Uh, unemployment is stabilising. Uh, last week we've seen um, a sort of rally in US um, equities driven on. A positive interpretation of earnings season. So there is there is some sort of faltering signs of, of growth there. Um, the real issue is whether the momentum can continue in the face of those uh, big three macro headwinds. Yeah, especially if we look at the Eurozone, we're in a real tug of war, aren't we, in terms of there's the central bank action, which seems to have allayed many uh, investors' fears. But on the other hand, there's still those fundamental problems. So who wins that? Well, which side wins that tug of war, the, the poor fundamentals or the strong central bank action? Well, um, you know, the general um, consensus view is don't fight the Fed, don't fight the central bank. If they're um, intervening, there is um, cause for um, sort of positive reaction in, in risk assets and equity markets. Um, but the ECP is putting a good backstop. Um, it seems to have stabilised bond markets in the short term to a degree. Um, their um, mechanism for bond buying um, is in place but hasn't been um, actually accessed yet. The tug of war that we're seeing is really uh, between, it looks like, Spain and Italy. Both um, could kind of do with some assistance um, here for varying reasons. Um, there is a little bit of um, chicken about the whole thing, who's going to move first for it, but they are surrendering up quite a bit uh, in, in um, return for that support. There's sovereignty at stake and clearly their own position as political leaders. Um, the challenge for Europe going forward is really that the market wants to see some tangible plan of action, some long-term uh, stronger fiscal union. Um, the, inter the central bank intervention has been uh, pretty strong. Um, Draghi has been um, a very uh, positive influence in the Eurozone since his, uh, since his arrival. Um, however, he and other central bankers have made quite clear um, that they have done their bit. Now it's time for the politicians to, to show, some, show some political will here. And uh, that's always been the kind of the issue. And where does the UK fit into this picture? Because the UK is a relatively small economy when you compare it to the whole Eurozone or the, or the US. Does it just have to go along uh, with the general risk sentiment? Well, I mean, the UK is clearly intertwined with the fortunes of both economies and particularly entwined uh, with that of Europe. Um, its voice on that stage and how they um, resolve um, the crisis is a bit of a side issue, really. Um, you know, we have a small voice at the table, but really we're looking for a stronger action from, from Germany in particular, um, but some of those core nations there. So it's important. How much influence we have on the stage now is up for question. November 6th is the, is the US election. The outcome of that is going to be vital, isn't it, when it comes to sorting out the fiscal problems in the US, because the 2nd of January is the deadline when the automatic cuts start to kick in again. 
Um, yeah, and we think it's um, going to be an important influencer for US growth prospects for 2013. Uh, and this fiscal cliff is a triple whammy of issues, um, tax breaks and spending cuts. And we've also got um, the issue um, around raising the debt ceiling. We know what a problem that was last year uh, between the two houses taking um, the US to the brink of a sort of ratings downgrade. That issue is still there. So um, we expect a lot of attention um, to be put on the US um, after the election. And we're hoping, and it certainly should be, um, right up there in terms of priorities for policymakers moving forward. I, I know Octopus manages nearly £3 billion pounds of assets. So how are, you, how are you positioned? Are you defensive? Are you being more aggressive? How are you positioned at the moment? Well, we've had in our portfolios um, a key concern about those macro issues. So we have been um, cautious for some time. Um, the issue that we've had um, over the short term really is not to get sucked into the short term noise around the US election. Um, there is not enough clarity and many multiple um, options of outcomes from this election and the impact. We're just sort of aware of the fiscal cliff looming. It needs to be tackled um, one way or another. Um, so our, our position has been keeping an eye on the long term. Uh, we've been in a holding pattern on our strategic asset allocation um, and really it's been a case of um, not being um, sucked into taking a meaningful bet against the index or that SAA until we have greater clarity. At the moment, we're just being held hostage to the policy makers. You can't second guess what they're likely to do. Um, it isn't sensible to do so. So let's just hold back on our long term view uh, and the fundamentals that we, we've relied on in the past. Well, some really interesting analysis there from Oliver. Later this week, I'll be talking to RBS about Forex. And I'll also be chatting with Simon Kirby from the National Institutes of Economic and Social Research. But from the banks of the River Thames, goodbye for now.